Today we brew Fay wine. Hi, I'm Brian. I'm Derica, and you're watching CS Brews Fermentation Friday. Today we're making something up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Fay wine is a thing. If you play D and D or any, a lot of fantasy games or fantasy anything, you've heard of. Fay wine. Now, there's a lot of different interpretations of what Fay wine is. Just to be clear, it is not wine made from Fay. Somebody asked that already. No. It's supposedly wine made from Fay druids, and no, no, there's no, no. a special by Fay druids. Yes, by. You said from. Oh, from. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. That's what I'm trying to make no, clear. No, it, There's no bodies in this. There are no Fay in this beverage. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so my descriptors that I found, which were surprisingly few, yeah. much to my dismay, and maybe it's just that our online D&D &D community is more indoctrinated with Feywine than the written community. I'm not really sure, because I found extensive lists of beverages found all through Feyrun, but not Feywine, which was a little discouraging. But I did find one describer and they were saying that it was a clearish beverage um, made from berries that were grown and harvested by phaedrids and it had mythical magical properties most notably in the communities that we're involved with it's an aphrodisiac makes you horny so, trying to go off of that, like I... completely against your will, <laughs> crazy kind of thing. I did uh, searches on what, were, what fruits were considered aphrodisiacs and what fruits were considered symbols of love. And strawberries yeah, fit it is, the bill it is Valentine's Day in both sections. So, that's why we're doing a whole four pounds of strawberries in our Fay wine. Frozen, too. But, because of the idea that it was a more of a clear, less colored beverage, we decided that apples, which are also a symbol of love, would be our base ingredient. So that way we'd get that nice golden dewy clear We have apples two different ways, color. by the way. Yes. And then our th third fruit berry element is raspberries because for some reason, it just seemed like a thing that should be included in Fay wine. I don't know. It why. seemed right. It seemed right. And finally, because it is Valentine's Day and this is the beverage of love, roses in the form dried rose of petals. dried rose petals are going to be included as well. So, there you have it. Sort of the assumptions that we've made on this. And essentially, what it's going to be is like a an apple wine with a lot of flavors added to it. Now, since we're not sure exactly how this is going to come out, we're going to be a little careful with some of the ingredients and some more can be added in secondary. And that's the cool thing about doing it this way. We want to get the essences of all these things, but we might end up wanting to bring this flavor out or that flavor out with another thing. Once, so, yeah, once our primary fermentation is done, we are going to take a rather thorough investigation tasting wise to see what notes we want to increase and maybe what notes we might want to diminish um, by what we're going to add in secondary fermentation. But to start, we have a bunch of apples, 14 to be exact, and these are Gala apples. Um, they're a medium-sized apple. I would say it's about, what, four and a half pounds? Four and a half pounds. So it's about four and a half pounds of apples. All I'm going to do with these is I'm going to cut them in half. So I'm going to take the seeds out, and then I'm just going to chop them up into bits, basically. We're not going to do any of the crazy chucking or anything like that. And I actually want the stems. I don't want the seeds. They have cyanide in them, for one, and they don't really ferment well. They kind of make things bitter. So I want to remove the, as much of the seeds as I can. But the core, the skins, all that, staying. That's important to have. Also, on the strawberries, all the green bits are staying on them. I'm probably not even going to break them up. They're they're totally frozen. We purchased these fresh. I washed them thoroughly and when I was washing them because I knew we were keeping the greens, I made sure to rub the greens so any debris, anything that was stuck on them was So they're they're clean. clean. Yeah. No, they have not been sanitized. Somebody's going to ask that. I don't believe in sanitizing food. It's just a weird thing to me. Um, but anyway, 
while we uh, we're gonna take a little bit of a break and chop up these apples and we'll be back all right so what we did is we chopped up our apples they're in two pieces about that big nothing too fancy there what I do want to do though is get them into the bag so I'm gonna get out our you didn't hear that I'm gonna get out our fermenter take its lid off and we have a bag I'm just gonna lay it over the top this is one of those big brew bags for making beer, but you'll see why it's kind of necessary for this one because all this fruit is going in there. I'm just going to put the lid on this and set it to the side because, you know, getting a little crowded in here. Okay, so as we said, this is going to be an apple juice base. The apple juice of choice for today is Kirkland, otherwise known as Costco, not from concentrate apple juice. That's really cool, not from concentrate. Now, not that I have a real problem with concentrate, but if you have the option, not from is better. The ingredients on this, there's two words, apple juice. Gotta love that. Could you use apple cider? Someone's gonna ask me. Of course you can. Now, to Americans, that means a cloudy apple juice. To a lot of you people in other countries, and I don't mean you people as you people, somebody's gonna give me Sorry about that. Anyway, what I mean by that is, in the other countries, cider is considered alcoholic. So, yeah, you don't really want to use alcoholic cider to make this because it won't really ferment. Anyway, so what I want to do is just get my yeast started. I'm just going to open this guy up. And I'm using the juice that it's going to be in because, you know, it just makes sense. If you have the option, do that. I'm just going to put a little bit in here. Eh, not that much. Lid this guy back up. This is a one gallon, by the way. We're making two gallons of this one. Why? Because there's a lot of fruit in this. I didn't want to use a glass fermenter because, you know, narrow mouth fruit, not good. So I have a five gallon bucket, which was the next size option. And with the amount of fruit that's going to be in here, I think making two gallons, it'll probably take up to three or four gallons in the bucket because of the amount of fruit. But we'll end up with two gallons, which will be good. So I'm just gonna set this back to the side for the moment. I have here a half packet of Lauvin 71B yeast. Somebody left a funny comment yesterday. They said, it's strange how Brian always seems to have a half packet of 71B laying around. You know, you have a point. I'm not really sure how that happens, but it seems to frequently. It is the time warp that is our beer fridge that we, in the top shelf we keep all the yeast. You also have to realize, I make stuff not on camera. It's true. Not everything we make is shown. I am very sorry. Anyway, so all I'm going to do is just pour this in here. As many of you know, this is my patented self-stirring cup. <laughs> it's not mine. It's the cup replacement cup from a magic bullet. Yeah, magic bullet thing. Yeah. <laughs> I can never remember the name of the stupid thing. It's okay. We don't use the blender. No. We just use the cups. <laughs> I actually got it to make that... Uh, that coffee. What do they call it? The one um, where you put butter in it? Yeah. Uh, like, isn't it got bullet in it? I don't know. It's like bulletproof coffee or I something think, I like think that. I think that's what it's called. I don't know how butter makes it bulletproof, but whatever. It was actually really good. It's yeah. just more of a pain in the butt to do, so that's yeah. why I don't do it. All right, so I'm just going to put that there. And it'll be right on the corner of the frame so you can watch it foam up. Won't that be exciting? <laughs> All right. Now I'm going to start weighing out some of our ingredients. The first one I'm going to weigh out is going to be the rose petals. Now, I've been presented with a quandary here because when I looked around for like rose hip and rose petal stuff, there was great variances in the amount of product used. Many people made a tea from it first, which we thought about that. Um, some people just used rose water, which is another way to go, but that's technically a distilled product. I didn't want to go there. So it left me with this, how much do I use? I don't know what to do here. So we got four ounces. That is four ounces of dried rose petals. Being that I'm making two gallons. We decided to err on the side of caution. Yeah. There's always secondary. When in doubt, put in what you think would be good and no more. Even a little bit less than you think might be good. You can always add more in secondary. But I do want the nutrient that this stuff's going to give. So I'm going to put in one ounce of these four. No and before somebody gets overly excited because Brian used the N-word, 
he's referring to nitrogen more than anything else because we know yeast likes to eat nitrogen to make it be happy and there is nitrogen in organic material. Also, a word about nutrients. I don't really have a problem with nutrients for your yeast per se. I have a problem with lab created chemically altered nutrients for your yeast. Like Fermate O, I really don't have a problem with it, except that it came from a lab. So I'm sure there's something in there that I really don't want. You want to use nutrient, you can actually take like regular bread yeast, boil it and add that in once it cools, obviously. And then it's just dried husks of, of yeast. It's actually quite fine. There's nothing wrong with doing it. My argument is you don't need it most of the time. However, I do like to add some things, natural things, for yeast to help chomp on, just, you know, to make things go a little bit better. All right, so there's one ounce of rose petals. Now, that means I still have three left. Should it need it in secondary? We've got more to add. Now, the first rose product that we were attempting to <laughs> use was actually <laughs> dried rose hips. And they were like these solid chunks of weirdness and we made a tea out of it and it got hardly no color very little aroma and it was strange it and just disappointing so it tasted we like it. water we actually made a video on making a, or were set out to make a video on making a rotomel and canceled making the video because we didn't have enough experience with it and i didn't feel that it was going to work so that's what so then we um, continued to research our rose making products and I don't even have to stick my nose in there. That's rose. Yeah. It is fantastic. This, I am super excited about this This is the product that I would use. Um, we're going to have links to this one. It's from Amazon. I will not put links to the other thing that we got because I don't think that it was going to work. No. Um, so yeah, back to Feywine. All right. Here's our fermentation bucket yet again. Notice the bag. Still in here. Rose petals. They <laughs> can see it. They can see? <laughs> they get the idea. I, I just put the rose petals in there. Here, put that to the side. Uh, now, ideally, we would have wanted our frozen berries to thaw more than what they did. But, but... because we know that someone out there is going to do it this way, <laughs> we're, we're going to do it this we're way. We're doing this for you. Yeah. Not because we forgot to take them out before <laughs> filming or anything. They're sort of thawed a little. Ish. Sort of. <laughs> Raspberries in. Strawberries. Same idea. We didn't, we totally didn't forget to take them out. We're doing this because someone's going to do this. Strawberries, in. Now, I'm gonna put this in the middle so that you can see both of us. Can you see it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, look at that. You can see us both now. How awesome is that? Okay. So, so far we have four and a half pounds of Gala apples, de-seeded and cut. 12 ounces of frozen raspberries, four pounds of frozen strawberries, green stems still intact, a half a packet of Lauvin 71B, Hydrating in apple juice, one ounce of dries, dried rose petals, and now we are going to add some Kirkland apple juice. First, I tied the bag off, as you can see here. Just, just a quick knot. But I wanted to show you. Look at the amount of fruit. That's a lot of stuff. Yeah, that's a lot of fruit. <laughs> so I'm really, really glad that we used the five-gallon bucket because it would never fit. Now, you might be asking yourself, do they really need to use that much fruit? Hell no. Of course not. Why else do it, though? If you're going to do something, it's best to overdo it, right? I mean, why not? We're just making this the most, what's the word? There's a word for, like, ostentatious. Ostentatious. This is the most ostentatious wine ever. Rosary and Willfire, that was for you. And if you don't know who they are... Shame on you. <laughs> they're people we play an online D&D game with. They're characters. Well, yeah, they're the characters. They're the characters. Yeah, they're not anyway, the actual people. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just going to pour this in. So 
so we're going to do a total of one gallon of the apple juice. Total of two gallons. Two gallons. Because we have two of them. Mm. Earth gives to two. Note, no sediment at the bottom. I did not even shake this up. That makes me think, this is good stuff. We've actually had really good luck with Kirkland juices. Um, they make a Concord grape juice that we used recently that was... It's just really awesome. This stuff smells so good. It's probably not overly sweetened. Yeah, it just, it smells like fresh apples, uh, which is kind of, you know, what it's supposed to be. Now, if we were just making a, say, an apple wine or a sizer, this would be a great apple juice to use because it doesn't have any sediment in it. So that would aid in the clearing time. But because we have so so much else going in here it really wouldn't matter what kind of clarity our juice was because there's going to be plenty of other stuff floating around in there okay in case anybody's about to wonder i'm going to go dunk my hand in sanitizer so i can mix this around <laughs> the bag is floating and because it was big hunks of strawberries it was floating badly it's taking on the color of the roses already wow yeah, it's like orangey pink. It's pretty neat, actually. So I'm hoping color-wise this is kind of a light pink. I think that would be really cool. But the way it's smelling now, if it ends up anything <laughs> close to that, I'm going to be happy regardless of what color it is. So what we have now is a basic must, okay? This, I'm going to take a reading on it in a second because we have to build on this. If I just made a wine out of this right now, it'd be somewhere in like the 8 to 9% range, which is okay, but it would also go very dry. We don't, this should not be a dry wine. This should be a sweet wine, right? Now, before you go saying, oh, everything's sweet. Well, here's why. Sweetness and saltiness bring out flavors. That's why I like sweet wines and I like bourbon better than some other whiskeys. It's sweeter. It brings the flavors forward, letting you really experience them. Science. Anyway, so, since I have to sweeten this, there's a couple ways to go. I could use brown sugar, which, for this, I don't think it works. I could use some sort of artificial sweetener, which won't ferment, and is ick, so no. I could use, like, agave, which I find disgusting, just so you know. It's true. <laughs> so, I'm not going to do that. Then there's white sugar and honey. Now, I thought about using honey. The problem I have with that is that makes this a flavored sizer, which isn't the name. I don't really care. I feel that the honey, such a strong flavor that it might actually overpower this, and become too heavy. This should be a light, easy drinking wine with a fairly high ABV, you know, 14, 15 percent, something like that. So I thought, OK, white sugar. Well, white sugar is just kind of boring. I mean, it doesn't really bring much to the party. Sorry, all of you people that actually drink the sugar wine. I forget what it's called. It's not really my kind of thing. I've made it and it's not, I don't really like it. So I don't feel like it brings enough. So for the first time ever, I will be using sugar and honey. I'm gonna use one pound of each, not per gallon though, total, because we are making a two gallon batch. I was gonna use like two pounds of sugar. So I figured, okay, this is close. 35 points for honey, 46 points per sugar. When we average that out, it comes to about 40.5 points. We call it 40 points. So we're adding 40 points to whatever the original must is. All right, so I'm going to go get my 50-pound scale because this sucker is starting to get heavy. All right, so I got my heavy-duty scale here that does 50 pounds, which is useful for this because I don't want to break my other scale. It does 17 pounds, and I think this is more than 17 pounds already. Apologize that you cannot see my face, although for some that might be a good thing. You never know. All right, so we had to put a little uh, cutting board on here because the bucket has a little indent and it was just sitting on top of it. It wasn't actually doing anything. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to add our sugars in the form of a pound of honey that you may or may not see some of going in. And, and we are using Sweet Squeeze Florida Honey, um, the wildflower version. We like it. And also, a pound of sugar. Just gonna dump it right in. It 
pours a little easier than honey. <laughs> Much more controllable. Decadent. That's the word I was actually thinking of. Ostentatious is good too, but decadent is really the word. Now that our sugar additions have been put in, it is now time for the spoon of ridiculous size. It's actually made for this bucket. Now, this is going to be a little bit more challenging because we have cold stuff in here. So, I'm just going to do the best I can to mix it around and not, you know, break my spoon. Okay, so the spoon kept catching in the bag. It just was getting awful. And I just feel like this needs a really good mix. So, I sanitized my hand halfway up to my elbow and I'm mixing it with the best tools I got, which is at the ends of my arms. It's really cold though. Um, it's not so cold that the yeast will die, but it is cold enough that this is going to be a very slow starter. And that is kind of neat to me. I've never actually done it this way, so I'm curious to see just how this is gonna come out. I know it might take a few days to actually get going. It'll just take an, as long as it takes for the um, yeast to warm up, you know, for the must to warm up. And I knocked out some apples here and some roses. <gasps> oh no! See, this is why I hate these bags. Just makes a mess. Got to tie it off differently now. Stupid bag. That's why I don't use them. Why did I use it? You know why? Because people have been giving me grief for months. Now, if we were smart and we had thought ahead of schedule, which we rarely do, we would have put just the apple juice in here and added the sugars and stirred that all up. Oh, where's the fun in that? Before adding the fruit bag. Because where's that the would fun have in that? made that infinitely easier. Say, we're learning with you guys. <laughs> now, some people have accused us of scripting our shows. <laughs> I would like to point out that there is no way we scripted this. Because if we did, you'd be looking at my face right now rather than my elbow. But I'm just going to keep moving this until it's all stirred through. A couple of apples escaped. You know what? They can go swim on their own. I'm not putting them back in. I just tied the bag up. It's getting sticky. <laughs> Due to the fact that I feel like I mixed enough and it's really, really cold. That is not the air. I'm done mixing it. <laughs> okay. Now, I want to point something out. There's going to be a lot of people who are going to have an issue with what I did where I put my hand right into the must. I did sanitize first and yes, you cannot get everything out and all that. I'm also very comfortable with what I did. A lot of people are going to freak out and think that I'm going to ruin it and this and that. No, not at all. It takes a lot to ruin these things. I took precautions, but the way this bag is and everything like that, there's just no way it was going to get mixed any other way. Are there a million ways to do this? Yes. And we're probably showing you the most complicated and difficult. So you know better when you do it yourself. And that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Anyway, so what we have here, our hydrated yeast. I'm gonna pour that right into here. I'm not even gonna worry about mixing it in. That bag is still floating though. I'm just gonna try to jam it down. I am gonna have to push it down at the first couple of days. I'm gonna have to get in here and move it around and whatever, cause it's just gonna float. I might find some way to put a, a sanitized weight or something on it like you do when you're making sauerkraut. To just kind of keep it in the in there if i really 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 thought about it hard i probably would have made three gallons that way i'd have more liquid because that bag is huge and full of stuff but you know what learning all the time and i think this is cool we like to show you guys our mess ups our mistakes and our learning experiences along the way we never made this stuff before i never put that much stuff in a bag in a brew before so i mean this was only supposed to be one gallon and as i started looking at it i went yeah this ought to become two <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do now is take a reading. I'm guessing this is going to be somewhere around 1.105, give or take. Where am I getting that number from? Well, I know the juice is probably going to be like 1055, like most commercial juices. I'm guessing the fruit so far might have leached out maybe 10 or 20 points, so let's say 10, so that's 1065. And I know that one pound of sugar, one pound of honey averages out to 40 because, you know, when you add them together and then you divide it by two because it's two gallons, that should come out to somewhere in the neighborhood of 1.105. So that's my guess. We'll see how good I am. 
Are we ready? Wow, my hand is still really cold. And I don't get cold, so that says something. And someone's going to say that I should probably make adjustments for the temperature and all that. And you know what? They're probably right, but I don't think it's going to change all that much. Turkey baster. Graduated cylinder, hydrometer. That's all you need to do this. I'm just going to find a nice little corner here where I can squeeze some up and start filling it up. And you'll get to see the color that we were talking about as well. Hmm. Now that's very interesting. It's reading much lower than I expected. It's only reading 1084. Now, that could very well be because it's so cold. Um, that is an entire possibility. And in that case, well, then that's kind of wrong. We will be doing a follow-up on this video, and we will go over some of that stuff. I might wait till this comes to room temperature and take another reading and give you a little fill-in on that, too. Because 1084 just sounds like it's too cold, or somehow I messed up. Maybe the, the honey and the sugar aren't fully dissolved. Any number of things can cause that to do that. But you know what? I'm not worried. Because at the end of the day, this is still going to ferment eventually, and it's still going to come out probably tasting amazing. This is my point. We've seen so many people going crazy about little things that they think are wrong. We heard about somebody throwing out a batch because, what was it, after like two days, it started bubbling too much. Too much? They threw it out. Don't do that. All kinds of things can go wrong with your brew. All kinds of things can be done incorrectly. And it'll still work, and it'll still come out great. So while a lot of you are probably super angry with me right now for all the little things that we did wrong, it's a very realistic situation, and I did it in a way to show you all the things that can go wrong, and it can still work out just fine. But for now, I'm going to pour this back in. But check out that color. It's like orangey pink. It's just... Look at that. It's just cool. That If it comes out anything close to that color, I'm going to be really happy because that's just awesome. It looks very almost iridescent, like otherworldly, like, like Faye Wine should be. So now, I'll pop the lid on. All right, so I have a lid on here with a grommet, and then we have our airlock. You've seen airlocks before. If you don't know what one is, watch any of our other videos. We talk about it a lot. This one's starting to run a little long, so I'm just going to stick the airlock in the grommet. Suffice to say, it keeps the bugs out. That's what it's for. What's going to happen next? Well, I'm going to move this, because this is our kitchen table, and I really don't want it on here all the time. And I'm going to put it somewhere relatively cool, relatively dark. Okay, it doesn't have to be pitch black. Flashlights aren't going to hurt it if you want to look at it. Um, relatively cool. 70-ish degrees, probably for our house, maybe 72. This will come to room temperature, probably in a day or two. And that little bubbler is gonna start bubbling because the yeast are gonna come alive and everything's gonna work out. That's my point. How long will this sit for? I'm probably gonna give this two to three weeks, but I am going to check it pretty often because I don't want the fruit to get moldy or bad. Now, as long as it's fermenting, it probably won't because there's enough CO2 in there, but I don't wanna take any chances. So I'm gonna keep pushing that cap back down. I'll give it a little swirl and things like that just to keep it wet. After somewhere between two and four weeks, I'll remove that bag. And that is the next video that you get to see on this. As always, thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day. Bye-bye.